So, you've been on your grind for years. You have natural talent. Everyone has always said you are special. One day, kid, you'll be a star. The new drops are getting spins. Nothing crazy, but enough to build a little buzz in your city. Your name is starting to pick up steam. Then it happens. The hook to your newest single turns into a popular TikTok trend. Dance and all. You, you don't even fuck with TikTok. But now your notifications are blowing up. You did this shit organically. Be proud, king. Then the devil calls. Boy, do I got a deal for you. Welcome to Hidden America. And this is the dark side of the music and entertainment industry. Master P is not rich or any kind of money or anything like that based on him being good. Hell, rap been on long for his ass. Longer than his behind. And it got nothing to do with that. It's a global, co- global conspiracy to even we are all experimental. I'm not even talking about the conscious brother like X-Clan, uh, uh, Public Enemy, KRS-1, Paris and all. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about some innovative jazz like a uh, Tribe Called Quest, Diggable Planets, uh, uh, De La Soul. This was jazz put to rap. They didn't force foresight. Remember them groups, foresight and all that? They didn't force all the real deal rappers. They in Europe now. Now they got fucking advanced step and fetch it in Ooh, yeah. You got, you, you got, you, you see this bitch? They got a motherfucker named Juvenile now. You see this nigga on the, on the cover? Yeah. <laughs> Let's hit that pause button real quick. Before that Bobby Hammett clip, it sounded like a real wholesome story, right? It was starting to blow up locally, hell, even regionally. TikTok is blowing up. You are starting to eat off of your craft. Take your flowers, king. It was a long road. Things like this do happen very, very rarely, but it does happen. It's like hitting the lottery or getting struck by lightning. Why? Nothing in the music industry is done organically. Every artist is manufactured, hence the concept of the industry plant. If it is real, this is when the record company swoops in and you either get on board or your sound is copied by a talentless industry plant who gets all the credit. You are used and discarded, OVO sweatshop style, but to avoid this, This is when the Faustian bargain takes place. Your integrity and internal soul for material gain. And most importantly, fame. So, you want to join the club? You want to hear the Faustian bargain? Well, we've been watching you. And we think you could make a useful asset to the order. At this point, you can replace order or esoteric order with the record company. We see that you have created a parasocial relationship with your fans. You have gained their trust. This is great. Now like every celebrity or star on the world stage, you must take the oath. Are you willing to pay the ultimate eternal price? The Faustian bargain to become more than just a pawn? If you proceed, you you, you become a knight. The horse that makes 90 degree angles on the chessboard like the Masonic Square. The knight is the only piece that can jump over other pieces. Chess is the royal game, the game of kings. The knight can move two squares up, down, left, or right, and then one square at a right angle, meaning the knight alternates between light and dark squares with each move, yin and yang, dark and light, black and white, you become the knight personified, a Templar knight, and this is only because we see something in you, remember, you can, you have can make all anybody the a star, in the motherfucking world, without that motherfucking machine of finance, marketing and distribution, <laughs> we'll never know about it, that's true,
And that's that's and just that's real. Right. That is very, very that's true. Whack. That's and just the truth. Guys, as I said, listen. So whack. Well, I, 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 they can really I, take an untalented motherfucker and make them big if they want. Whack is 100% right. Record companies don't care if you have talent. Honestly, they would prefer if you didn't. They want individuals who are young, impressionable, and easy to control. Natural talent doesn't mean shit nowadays. It only gets you so far. Independent artists only get so far. You reach that plateau. You need that machine. The record company. The devil behind you to break through to the mainstream. God forbid make it on radio or make it on the select playlist like Rap Caviar or put you in those spots. All the streaming services and platforms are owned by the same people who own the record companies. It's a giant network similar to the intelligence network. Same descent. Same religion, same lingo. Rich baby daddy, it's like Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. Wow. <laughs> He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy named so, Lucian. So all of his streams <laughs> and the number ones is controlled by someone named Lucian. Oh, well, Lucian work for people who control the banks in Africa. The record companies are literal black magicians who know that our thoughts create our reality. Therefore, if you can shape the perception of reality, you can control reality or what the masses perceive as reality through the consistent veil of propaganda in illusions. By the end of the early 1960s, the intelligent networks realized that this could be accomplished through music and movies. An entire nation could be brainwashed and controlled through what they perceived as entertainment. Now witches and warlocks cast spells, right? Well, just like spells are cast, music and movies are broad casted the devil or that old dragon satan is the literal prince of the air the air waves that is john todd said it best you must be an initiated witch or mason in the music industry but i was the managing president of zodiac productions it's one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people thus i got to know Many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby. Crosby Stone Ash and Young. I saw David the day before Christmas last year. I talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done. Because you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the colon conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now I got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He says the same as when you were in, so that we can play spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He said, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. So thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown eight track that the album is cut on and is placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the eight tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a master's cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium 
that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in executive offices and it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor. And 13 hand chosen witches and witch wizards in a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. As I tell many Christian parents, you can go home and count your kids' records, probably yours too, and count how many demons at least are there. If that's too hard for you to believe, I'm sorry. That's why they do it. Now listen to me. This is why rock music's addicting. Have you ever seen kids that got rid of their music, they go around like this. They can't wait to find a rock station somewhere and they sneak off just like getting a cigarette or a fix because it's addicting. That's why they can't give it up. The rest of the conversation was this. You can't cast a spell on a Christian, but you can get a Christian to cast a spell on themselves. If you give the permission for the spell to work, being a Christian won't block it. And rock music is not just a song. It is supernatural music that which is carefully designed by their spirit guides or familiar spirits in the form of spells. Now, although the devil's music's par is the music and God's music is the words, much of the songs are written in what we call witch language. Give you kind of an idea. You talk, on, many of you talk on the CD, unless you know what you, what a smoky is, and uh, a tin four, and uh, uh, a front door and back door and rocking chair and these type of things, you don't know what you're talking about. Same with witches. When you're in the first or second level, you have to learn over 2,000 words that said by anybody else means something totally different than when you say them. Elton John has said he's never written a song or sung a song that wasn't in which language. Now I'm going to show you something. See how many kids in here will be honest and adults. How many remember and have heard at least several times a song called Hotel California? Somebody tell me what it meant. <laughs> Quickly, somebody tell me what it meant. Huh? That's pretty close. But from the words, what did it mean? Well, that's more of a guess. See, most people can't tell you. That's why when people do drugs and they listen to songs in which language, they get some of the meaning. But most of the time, they can't tell you. Stop and think how many songs are out there that you really like and you don't have any idea what the person was talking about. Beyond the Yellow Brick Road? How about The Destroyer by Kiss? Can anybody tell me what it's about? Kiss said in it, kids, tell your parents. They're talking about Helder Skelter. Beatles sung Helder Skelter in which language nobody knew what it meant. Manson did because he belonged to the process. Helder Skelter is a seven, several thousand year old word. Most of the music is either about Helder Skelter or a place called the Nightwinds, which is what Hotel California is about, and different doctrines of witchcraft. You listen to them, your parents let you listen to them, and they have no idea. Kiss openly bragged how they were gaining control of people through their music because the people played their music. They told how they didn't form their own group. Their church, because they were ordained ministers of the Satanist church, placed them together. And that's how most of the music is done. David Crosby, when him and Crosby, still nice and young, produced the record Two-Way Street, they ordered the Principality of Medes to order demons of rebellion to go into the record, and everybody that heard it would be rebellious. Edward Bernays said, Cinema in the music industry is a great distributor for ideas and opinions. The motion picture can standardize the ideas and habits of a nation. Hollywood is the great distributor for ideas and opinions. Bernays continues, The motion pictures can standardize the ideas and habits of a nation. Because pictures are made to meet market demand. They reflect, emphasize, and even exaggerate broad popular tendencies rather than stimulate new ideas and opinions. Musical and Hollywood stars are the idols of today. These idols walk the red carpet. The red is symbolic of the blood of the masses the profane Gentiles. These Hollywood or musical star live on immortalized in cinema and on vinyl. In Hollywood, each artist has an agent. Like I mentioned, this is the same lingo, lingo used in the intelligence network. Each lawyer and agent comes from the same descent 
and practices the same religion. Now, almost all sign artists have handlers who control all aspects of their lives. They are no longer free-thinking humans, but simply parts to the machine. Their eternal soul has been given to the abyss long ago. Sonically, music is the number one tool that can be used to heal or to harm the listeners. Frequency manipulation is the record company's number one tool. They're purposely pushing harmful ideas, visuals, and records. So these songs then manifest in the public eye, in reality. Think of drill music for an example. In the spiking murder rates in Chicago, it is a perfect example. They have tricked a whole group of people and artists into selling not only sex and drugs, but literal murder. So why do record companies do this? It doesn't seem like the best investment strategy to me, but of course, there's far more than meets the eye. Eight white males sitting around the table arguing about which of their deals is better than the others. They have 15 or 18 deals in their mind and 25 relationships. They think that if they bring them together, they can make money. And then they sit at the table and argue about, well, my deal is better than yours and I'm going to shoot your idea. It's a very bespoke process. And most people think, oh, by that, the cream will rise to the top. The best returns will manifest out of that process, that crucible of, 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 of engaging. But go look at the facts. The facts show high volatility, okay? Some cases do great, some cases lose everything, right? And you know, look, I don't call that invest. So before you sign your name on that dotted line, remember a few things. First, the record company is a bank. Everything that is given to you is a loan with predatory interest rates. You are not paid in money, but in fame or clout. The record company is the pimp and the artist is the hoe, stuck with Stockholm Syndrome. In Hollywood, the elite follow the Luciferian doctrine. Now you do as well. What does that entail? Well, you sign the blood oath, right? Blooded rituals are required as offerings to your now king, the first rebel. Blood sacrifices are dependent on your eternal agreement. It could be yearly, before a major announcement, or every few years. It depends on your position on the Masonic checkerboard. Death occurs often to those close to you, the artist. Others must repay for your sins so you can live your lavish lifestyle. Humiliation rituals are to be done immediately at the request of the order. Always show your allegiance to the order, aka the record company. Mammon or money is your false idol. We are now your god. We will use you to push science to eliminate spirituality and god. Invert all gender ideology. One way to show your loyalty is, in, is to invert your own gender. Become a Baphomet. We can request this of you at any time. Target and even better, sexualize children. Kill all innocents. Become the Demiurge. Children are the number one target. And he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album, I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Now, once the artists realize how deep they truly are, 
it's already too late. Record companies strictly give out 360 deals, so you are stuck with the 360 deal. Everything the bank loaned to the artist, everything, touring expenses, studio time, everything. Daddy, aka the record label, is guaranteed to recoup on their investment with interest, and you are their investment. You may be saying, but I would never sign a 360 deal. Well, all the major labels will simply pass on you, steal your IP, and make a cheaper clone of you. When Tupac realized he didn't own his masters or any of the rights to his own work, Pac found a loophole. The the name Tupac Shakur was owned by the record company, copyrighted. So Pac came out of the jail with a new moniker, Machiavelli where he owned his future masters in IP. Shortly after this chess move, Machiavelli was killed. The entertainment business is a (laughs) a business of prostitution and thievery. And that that was rampant (laughs) around my son's talent. Now you might be asking yourself, What about a distribution deal? Well, either way, you are still peddling and begging to daddy, the record company. You can go the route of a distro deal, make sure it is your best work ever put on wax, and then tour on the hopeful success of the limited push of the machine. This is the Tech 9 route. You can make a good living like this and still own your masters but it is an incredibly tough tough route we rather put our all into another artist who's got a 360 deal than to an artist who doesn't right. and that has his own situation and is just we're just doing distribution yeah. that doesn't really make us any money now let's be crystal clear you do not sell your soul to the devil the record company is the devil. I want all the servers dressed in skimpy outfits serving all the hors d'oeuvres. This is getting really expensive. Shut up, it's Halloween. This is my night. Then at midnight for dessert, I'm thinking over here, we bring out a huge chocolate fondue fountain. Oh yeah, P. Diddy had his birthday party here a couple years back and he had one of those. Oh, screw that then. I don't want a fondue fountain if P. Diddy had one. Does it matter? Yes, it matters. I don't want to do it if Diddy did it. How about a donut machine? Did Diddy do it? Diddy did do it. A full ice cream bar. Diddy did it. Damn it, what didn't Diddy do? The fact is, if you were signed to a major, you don't own anything. The record company made you, you are replaceable, and they can destroy you. Remember, never mention the organization, but always show your allegiance while while in public. This can be done through handshakes, called grips, subtle hand signs, the setting of the picture, or how your feet are set up. Remember, when you are no longer useful, you will be eliminated. Now you know, think long and hard before you get into the fame game. It's a lose-lose, and your internal soul is at stake. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in healing your mind, body, and soul, perhaps reconnect to the one true source. I have written and published five books at this point that will help you do just that. Get the complete Hidden America collection now. Men lie, women lie, but my Etsy reviews don't. Thank you to all my Patreons. Join my Patreon to unlock over 350 exclusive articles, tweets, and videos. It is a goldmine of esoteric and metaphysical knowledge. It is the perfect place for the student of the occult sciences, whether a novice or initiative. Follow me on X and Instagram for daily content. Much love, guys.